If you're a fan of science fiction or fantasy, you've probably seen this Onion article. Science fiction novel posits future where characters are hastily sketched. <laughs> it's funny because it's true. There's been a lot of sci-fi fantasy novels where the characters are a little thin, and that's to be understandable. I mean, building alien worlds and asking what if and magic systems and stuff like that is a special skill set, and people who have that skill set don't always have the ability to come up with complex characters and deep conflicting human emotion. But there's no reason you can't do both, and I think reading stuff that's not in your genre is the perfect place to start. So whether you're an author of science fiction and fantasy or just a fan of science fiction and fantasy, stick around because I'm going to talk about five books that aren't science fiction and fantasy that science fiction fantasy authors should read. The first is one you probably were supposed to read in high school, but maybe you didn't. It's The Great Gatsby. And the reason I have to bring this up is, I don't know if you know, but George R. R. Martin based the character Littlefinger on The Great Gatsby. Littlefinger and Gatsby were both born poor and both really wanted to be rich, even if that meant doing things that weren't totally legal. They both created this different persona and they both did it because they were madly in love with a woman. Well, it's not just what you read, but it's how you read. So think like George R. R. Martin. Take these characters and transport them to this wonderful world you've created, and it's just going to make your story that much more fleshed out. Aim for some of the greatest literature ever written, and if you fall short, you're still upping the game of sci-fi and fantasy. The second book on my list, The Kite Runner by Khalid Hosseini. I loved it because the main character was riddled by guilt for an act of cowardice he did in his youth and spent his whole life regretting it and then trying to redeem himself. That is a juicy character. Mmm, yummers. And another thing that's great about The Kite Runner, it takes place in Afghanistan and it covers the time before the Taliban took over and shows the changes that happened to everybody who lived in the country after the government completely changed. And a lot of sci-fi guys will copy and paste a galactic empire or a dark overlord. Well, why not study something that's really happened on planet Earth and use that to inform your fantasy sci-fi world? It'll make it so much more real. The third book that I can't recommend enough, The Poisonwood Bible by Barbara Kingsolver. It's about so many things blind faith, post-colonialism. It follows a family of missionaries in Belgian Congo in 1959. We meet a character who's so convinced that he's right and that he's smarter than all the locals because of his religious convictions. And I think this is fantastic for worlds of sci-fi and fantasy. I've talked about not having the villain be a mustache twirling person who wants to take over the world. They need to believe they're the good guy and filling them with a belief system that convinces them that they're always right is a great way to have a really strong character. The fourth book I want to mention is a collection of short stories by Ernest Hemingway. Now, I could have very easily said, The Sun Also Rises, A Farewell to Arms, For Whom the Bell Tolls. He has so many great novels, but the thing I love about the short stories is you get a lot of Hemingway in a short amount of space. Hemingway is really good at getting to the meat of the bones on a character. And what do I mean by that? Think about all the people you see in your life, the people you work with, the people you interact with when you go shopping or wherever. Everybody's always on party matters. You're putting up a front. You're not really being yourself. Fake, 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 fake. But everybody has that thing that's going to push them over the edge. The most mild-mannered person you know there's something that's going to make him snap. I'm angry at you! But the person who seems so stoic, there's something that's going to make them break down and cry. That's the meat on the bone of a character, and an author really needs to get to that. You have to figure out what's deep inside this character, and Hemingway is fantastic at this. And another thing I love about Hemingway, his prose is very simple, and I know that could come off as an insult, but it's not. Nothing screams bad writer than a writer who uses a bunch of big words 
And then when you decipher it, you realize they didn't say anything. They just filled it with flowery prose. We must internalize the flatulation of the matter. The fifth book that I highly recommend to up your character game, Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I always thought Crime and Punishment was going to be about a guy who committed a crime and then felt overwhelming guilt about it. That's part of it, but there's so much more to it. This is about a guy who commits a heinous crime and keeps justifying it to himself. He justifies what he does because he thinks killing and stealing to further his education will ultimately good, be good for the world because he's so wonderful. I'm not the nicest guy in the universe because I'm the smartest and being nice is something stupid people do to hedge their bets. So if you read Crime and Punishment, really study the way Dostoevsky got into Raskolnikov's mind. and. Even if he's a very unlikable character, you feel him. You feel what he's feeling. You understand him. Even if he's justifying horrible things, it's a really great way to portray a character. And if you translate this to the world that you've built filled with fantasy and what-ifs and science fiction, you could populate that world with compelling characters. And that's usually the missing link in sci-fi and fantasy. And if you could up your game, well, we'll make that Onion article look silly. So happy writing, happy reading. And if there's other books that you love that aren't in the genre that you think will help you become a better genre writer, please comment below. I'd really love to hear.